Hey guys, Major Frenchy, welcome. Today I'm going to talk about two accessories uh, for the virtual pinball cab and uh, therefore the force feedback. And the first one I'm going to talk about is the uh, gear motor. So the gear motor, uh, it's this one is an electric car window motor. And you can also get a uh, wiper uh, motor that works as well. I've never used a wiper, but I know some people have used it and they say uh, they are getting very good results. Uh, now, this is, for example, when you're playing a table and you have something on a pivot that is triggered in a table, for example, could be like a gun uh, on, a, on an axe and then it would actually spin, well, it would trigger the, the, the gear motor in the table, well, this will get triggered. So typically, the one I've seen anyway, uh, you've got the two connectors inside this white case. Uh, I'm simply going to use the small connectors like, like this, and I'm going to insert them in here. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to let you hear the noise of the uh, gear motor. Okay, so I've got the positive and the negative connected. Now it's important, anything with a motor in the cabinet, when I'm doing the connections, the gray bar is gonna actually connect on the positive and the other side is gonna be on the negative. So you can do it whichever way you want. Some people put it here, some people, some people put it directly there. Uh, I'm going to probably solder this. It's gonna be a lot uh, stronger. Uh, as far as connection goes, and I'm going to put some shrink wrap, and that way uh, you're set. I've got my workbench power supply, and I got, well, almost 12 volts. Okay, just There you go, 12 volts. And uh, I'm going to touch, I'm gonna, I got a gator clip. I'm going to clip. This is the positive. The ne negative is here. So I'm going to touch this, and you should hear the gear motor. Now here's a little trick on how to choose your fuse. With a workbench, when you apply the power, you'll see the current. So I've got 1.72 amps. So that means that I'm going to use a 2 amp fuse for this device. Now this is the small shaker motor I'm going to use. I, I own an original Stern shaker motor. This thing, guys, is a beast of a shaker motor. It is so loud, so uh, big, that because I'm limited in the space, I'm going to use a small one like this. Uh, this is available for, like, not even 8 bucks on AliExpress, guys. That's a great value. So um, I I'm actually going to show you how I'm going to mount this in the cabinet with the help of a 3D printed case. Now, uh, my printer died. I've got the Flash Forge uh, Creator Pro, and it died. So thank you so much, Sean T62, for printing it for me. Uh, I'm gonna have to replace this, I guess, eventually. The motor fits right in the enclosure here, and you can close the lid. And what happens is you got four holes for screws, and then that will actually apply some pressure and prevent it from vibrating the case. So you're not gonna hear the rattling of the case. So um, let's see how we're going to connect and mount this. One thing I don't like about this one, see how the pins are close to the uh, spinning weight? So there's no way I can actually use these connectors uh, because they will actually hit the spinning weight. Uh, you could actually bend the pins, which I've tried, but it, you can always break it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to solder the pins right on the on the side on each side and use the diode as well and that way it's not going to interfere this case is really well designed uh, it actually allows to fish your wire right in the case just by the bottom here so that's going to be quite convenient uh, thank you so much bluetopia 
uh, for actually providing this print on the Thingiverse. So thank you so much. That's actually a good fit. It works well. And I really appreciate your work on this. Okay, so uh, I soldered the uh, two wires on the side and I got the uh, diode. Now the diode, uh, you, can, you cannot see it, but I got some shrink tube. Always shrink tube your diode because the uh, legs are uh, basically live. So that if you touch anything, that will short. So that's a good practice. So I'm going to need some two and a quarter or two and a half inch screw to actually close it properly, have some pressure on the lid so it does not vibrate because right now I got nails just to hold it in place on the workbench, but it it's not secure so you can hear this rattling, but I want I want you to hear the noise anyway. Uh, we're going to start at five volts. And this is a 12 volt uh, shaker. So I'm just going to touch the ground here. So that's at five volts. But with some pressure, with the proper screw, that's what you will hear at five volts. Let's bump it up a bit. That's with the pressure, that's what you will hear. And if I don't put the uh, pressure on it... So... It's a small motor, but it's very loud. So that'll be perfect in a smaller cab. You know, like I said, you just gotta have to have the screws to put the proper pressure on it. All I need to do now is to mount this and the gear motor in the cabinet, and I'll show you the, uh, well, once it's wired, I'll show you how it looks. All right. So here's where I mounted the shaker motor. So I got four screws with the uh, washer so it actually has good grip and it's actually solid so there's not going to be any rattling coming from this which is good and of course I have the 12 volt of this connected to the 12 volt terminal block and the negative is actually this wire right here so I'm going to connect it to port number nine PWM uh, pulse width modulation, meaning that we can vary the current of this shaker motor so it will adjust. And uh, so that's kind of nice. And the next wire next to it is the same thing, but for the gear motor. So I'll show you where I put the gear motor. I decided to I'm do something different. So it's mounted right here. So right under, so it's not going to interfere with anything else. I drilled a hole, just ran the wires. So let's hear the devices. Let's start with the shaker motor. That's quite nice. And let's try the gear motor. What I like about the location of the gear motor is that it's going to be outside the cabinet. It's it's a um, well, it's a weak noise, but outside the cabinet, we're going to we're going to actually be able to hear it really well. That's it, folks. I'm going to continue with the build. Uh, don't worry about uh, you're not going to miss anything. As soon as I put something in or connect something, I will show you how to do it. Uh, if you actually have virtual pinball questions. The uh, virtual pinball chat on Discord has the answers for you. With over 8,000 members, that is the place to be for virtual pinball stuff. Guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.